I was wrong. I assumed the Typhoon stats wouldn't be coming out till Monday, but nope, they put them out today. So let's take a look. So to recap a little bit, this is the Typhoon class. It is actually a revamped model of a very old Star Trek Online design, one that was never made into a playable ship, mostly because I, I don't really know why the original reason was, but you know, as time went on, it was never made into a playable ship, mostly because it looked like a potato. Uh, but yeah, uh, they've decided to remake the ship uh, or revamp the ship and make it into a playable ship, and it is going to be the reward for the dimensional or for the dimensional Typhoon special event coming up on Tuesday. Uh, that's for PC console you guys will be getting this on a later date. Thomas Moroni has confirmed that this revamp was done by EC Henry with some modifications done by Mauricio Tesserina. I know I say this every time but I'm still not convinced I'm pronouncing his name correctly. They even gave some interesting lore around the ship saying that this was uh, a contender to be Starfleet's next super capital ship one that was designed by an Andorian shipyard which I guess is why uh, it was meant to be an explainer for the funky look in the cells because uh, they, they definitely look more Andorian than Starfleet there there's a little bit of the uh, a hint of like the Kumari in there which I think is kind of cool uh, but yeah uh, this was uh, meant to this was uh, designed with the idea of it being Starfleet's next super capital ship but was ultimately overshadowed by the Odyssey class so the design was abandoned until the Klingon War started, where it served as a battle cruiser and uh, one that was rather useful too, because especially because it was uh, smaller and more cheap to produce than the larger Odyssey class star cruisers. Uh, so it, it made a good vanguard ship, basically. So and continued to serve well throughout the uh, early uh, early 25th century with all the other conflicts going on in Star Trek Online. Anyway, enough of the lore, let's get into the stats. So, we know this is going to be a temporal battle cruiser, but they also gave it a secondary uh, command seat, but uh, a little bit more on that, because I'm actually not super happy with the placement on that. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a T6 ship, uh, any faction, it has a hull modifier of 1.4, which is rather high, uh, even for most cruisers, especially for a battle cruiser, so this is going to be a fairly tanky ship, uh, shield modifier of 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, they actually gave it a 5-3 weapons layout, which I'm certainly pleased with, uh, three device slots. In the seating, it has a Lieutenant Commander Tactical slash Command Seat, a Commander Engineering slash Temporal Seat, a Lieutenant Commander Science Seat, an Ensign Universal Seat, and a Lieutenant Universal Seat. And this is where uh, things kind of lose their shine, is that they put the Command Seat on the Tactical Seat, meaning you are going to have to choose between your high-level Command abilities or your higher-level Tactical abilities. So you're going to have to choose between something like Suppression Barrage or Concentrate Firepower, or your higher level firing modes like fire at will or beam overload which sucks i really don't like that this command seat would have been much better served on either the science seat or they could have uh knocked this uh science seat down to a just a lieutenant level and then bump the universal up to lieutenant commander to uh at least give you another option for more tactical seating though at that point that's kind of a lot of tactical seating so i i would have much preferred this to be on the science seat Anyway, moving on, uh, the consoles, four tactical, four engineering, three science, uh, again, would have preferred that to be a five for, to maximize on isomags, uh, base turn rate of nine, impulse modifier of 0.18, inertia rating of 50, uh, plus 10 to weapons, plus 10 to auxiliary, that I like, actually, that's a really, those are, that's really good power bonuses for uh, a temporal battlecruiser like this. Uh, it's got a universal console. It can equip dual cannons because it's a battle cruiser. It will have the molecular molecular reconstruction uh, mechanic. So th that's the the temporal ship mechanic. So this is another event ship that is actually going to be entirely full spec. Which uh, this is technically the second one that we've only seen. The Vovine one was like this too. This is the second time we've seen uh, an event ship have a full commander level uh, a full commander level spec seat with the full. Uh, ship mechanic alongside it. Uh, last year, or last year, they had starting with the uh, the Hyperion battle cruiser. They had started uh, rolling out ship mechanics on event ships, but they weren't giving them the commander level spec seat. So, like the uh, the Hyperion ship only had a lieutenant commander intel seat while having the full intel ship mechanic. But they seem to have abandoned that and just are just making these full spec like any other ship, which I really like. It really does add a lot of value to these free event ships. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, 
uh, cruiser mastery package. It has the uh, shield weapon and strategic maneuvering. Uh, this command auras, which is typical of a battle cruiser, and it has the battle cruiser mastery package, giving it buffs to uh, kinetic and physical damage resistance, uh, crit severity, energy and radiation damage resistance, and maximum hull. The Typhoon also has a console called Protonic Snare Projector, and it's basically a, a big hold field that deals proton damage. Uh, it, it grows in size as it's active. Uh, they actually gave us a little bit of tooltip information for once. Uh, it creates an expanding net uh, which damages and holds enemy targets, uh, can create an energy net that expands as it travels up to 10 kilometers in the face in the direction that you're facing. Uh, to foes, it'll deal proton damage up to three times per second, uh, per overlapping beam uh, and provides a brief hold. So it's basically creating like a spider web of proton damage that gets bigger and bigger in the direction that you're facing. For every beam that makes contact with uh, the ships that are inside the field, they will uh, receive proton damage. Additionally, this console provides passive bonuses to Starship Projectile Weapon Training Skill and the Starship Projectile Shield Penetration Skill. So a little bit of buffs to your uh, uh, to your projectile weapons, so torpedoes and mines. But the fact that they're buffing the skill rather than just generating actual damage buffs for your torpedoes means these buffs probably aren't going to be that high. The Shield Penetration buff could be pretty decent. I wish they had given us information on just how much... Uh, or just how much of a buff these skills would be getting. So the shield penetration might be kind of nice, but it's already pretty easy to get shield penetration for your torpedoes. And given that this is already only, th given that this is only uh, buffing the projectile weapon skill, it's not going to be a huge buff to your projectile weapon damage. So uh, this is, it might be a decent budget console for torpedo builds, but I, I can't imagine it's going to be anything super useful on the high end. It could also be decent for a proton-themed build, given that the console itself does deal proton damage as well. But again, we don't know how much damage, uh, how much proton damage the console will deal, and the fact that it's like damage over time, and it depends on multiple beams crossing over. I can't imagine each individual beam is going to be doing a great amount of damage, and it seems to be more focused on like uh, the hold ability rather than the damage itself. And proton damage is weird too, because it's not a standard energy weapon damage type anyway, so it's difficult to buff uh, even in these days. Like it's doable, but it's still not, so it's still something like the average player isn't going to be pursuing. So yeah, the, the console, it's it seems kind of gimmicky. The Starship trait is called Piggyback Launch Tubes. Uh, specialized torpedo tubes allow additional micro uh, allow additional micro charges to be loaded and fired along with your ship's standard torpedoes. Uh, when firing a torpedo at a foe, uh, you will additionally you will automatically launch uh, a micro charge for additional kinetic damage. Uh, to that target this microcharge works while under special firing modes but will only ever fire a single additional charge at your primary target so basically anytime you fire a torpedo you fire a second smaller torpedo it does seem to be somewhat affected by uh, uh firing modes but it will still only target one target at a time so this could potentially be a decent torpedo build trait uh it, it's really going to depend on uh how often these actually fire because i um, i would be surprised if it fires every time you fire a torpedo because typical torpedo builds they are just loaded up with torpedoes they have you know, they generally run with five torpedoes in the uh, the forward in the forward arcs. So I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if this has some sort of cooldown on it to prevent you from just like spamming it like crazy. Either that, or they do let you spam it like crazy, and it just does absolutely worthless amounts of damage. It's it's going to be one or the other. I do find it kind of funny that they seem to have put some focus on making torpedo build, you know, console and starship trait stuff on a ship that really isn't that well suited for torpedo build. Not that that's a new thing for Star Trek Online, but they they they, they seem to have tried to want to make this into a torpedo build by giving it a lieutenant commander command seat without thinking about the fact that you're basically forcing uh, players to choose between concentrate firepower three and one of your torpedo firing modes in the lieutenant commander spot. So you're going to have to sacrifice one or the other in order to make a torpedo build out of this. And it's just, it's not, it's definitely going to be suboptimal in comparison to other torpedo build ships, even easy ones to obtain like the Eagle. Like the Eagle right now is still, is still considered to be arguably the best uh, torpedo build platform in the game right now. So the fact that they would try to compete with that 
by releasing a free version when the best torpedo build ship right now is already a sea store ship which is not that much harder to uh obtain it, it just seems weird to me and it's especially by nerfing it this much by putting the uh the command seat on the lieutenant commander seat if they really wanted to make this a serious torpedo build platform they would have put this command seat on the science seat but whatever and another thing there is that I feel like the vast majority of the player base really doesn't give a crap about torpedo builds. And I say that from my own experience, having posted torpedo builds in the past, and just a lot of the viewers just, a lot of you guys just say really mean things about that stuff. <laughs> like, if it's not an energy weapon build, a lot of the people just don't really care. So I feel like most people are going to run this as an energy weapon build, which you easily could. Like, the, the temporal seating is going to be useful for a lot of uh, different things. The command seat still could be used for... Uh, energy weapon stuff with like uh, suppression barrage you can turn it into like a decent tank um, but again that means you're going to be fighting between choosing suppression barrage one or one of your uh, f uh, energy weapon firing modes yes you could use the vincent kish duty officer to give you so yourself a chance to give yourself to the higher level version of that firing mode but again he only has like a chance to work so it's not like a guarantee of that firing higher firing mode but I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh on this just because, I mean, this it's a free ship after all. And they actually gave it the 5-3 firing mode that everyone was begging for, so I don't know. I really wish this command seat was on the, the science seat, but I don't know. It's... It's it's a free ship. It's I, I it's it really really isn't uh something to scoff at. I'm sure plenty of people are going to have a ton of fun of this, and most most of you only care about Space Barbie anyway. So, uh, there's that. And it, this is a really pretty ship too. I really do dig the look of this. I love what they did with the uh, the Star Drive section here. Actually, um, Thomas Marty posted uh some better pictures the same day as the original announcement. Uh, the the deflector has sort of a uh, it's very similar to the Chimera, which I really like. I feel like it really works on uh the ship he posted some other pictures on blue sky here so you get like a nice view of the top side someone in the comments on the first video pointed out that the uh the dark section of the hull kind of looks like looks like a stylized omega symbol and i'm never going to unsee that but i really like the look of it that's kind of cool yeah we got this then here's the aft end you can see the little uh little impulse engines in the back it's very narrow in the back uh which is uh kind of interesting and then Here's another view at the deflector dish. Yeah, re really pretty ship. Uh, and I feel like that's going to be like the big factor here of why people are going to pick this up. Because I, ultimately, it's it's a free ship. It's a free ship. So ultimately, guys, just get this ship. I know, it doesn't really matter if you're like super into it. It doesn't really matter if you're going to be playing it or not. Just I mean, It's a free ship. You may as well grab it and, you know, get it while it's free because this is an event ship. So... Once the event is over, that means it's going to disappear for two years and then show up in what's market. Okay, so ultimately, that is the Typhon Temporal Battlecruiser. It, it's it's a solid ship. You, you The Temporal Command combo, you, it does have a decent amount of versatility to it. It's just, I really wish that command seat was on the science seat. That is going to bug me. That is going to bug me for the rest of time or until I get distracted by something else. But it's a solid ship. A lot of people are going to be really happy with this, especially because it is a free ship. Uh, this will be unlocked on your entire account. You'll be able to use this on as many characters as you want. Uh, it'll, it'll hold up in high level content just fine with the right build you'll be able to have a ton of fun of this thing uh and it'll make a, it'll make a really great budget build platform yeah not really else much else to say on it other than just to keep gawking at how pretty it is because this is a really nice looking ship i'm really digging this i love that they gave it the odyssey hull material too it's i, I love the odyssey hull material it's so clean and polished i i, I really dig it and it's it's ever since the odyssey revamp came out i'm glad that they're still using more of this even though technically the type 7a hull is technically the uh, uh like the the mainstream hull to be using for star trek Alliance era at this point yeah, really pretty ship. Decent stats could have been better, but at the same time, they are still pretty solid, and this is a free event ship. And for a free event ship, this is a really nice ship. So go out, go play the, uh, what was it called? The Dimensional Typhoon event starts up on Tuesday on PC console. You guys will be getting this at a later date, which has yet to be announced yet. Uh, but yeah, that's the Typhoon. Uh, I look forward to it, and I'm sure a lot of you are too. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of the ship down below in the comments, and and while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you would like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member, or you can find the link to the merch store down below, or if you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be 
sure to use my content creator code STU1701. Any of those really help me out, and I really do appreciate it. Either way, though, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.